Maxwell House Coffee presents Good News of 1938. Once again, the makers of Maxwell House Coffee invite you to be their Hollywood guests. So imagine yourselves on stage 30 of Metro Golden Mayer Studios, where tonight you'll meet Freddie Bartholomew, Fanny Bryce, and Hanley Stafford, Frank Morgan, Mary Martin, Douglas McPhail, and Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. And here's your host for this hour of entertainment, Robert Taylor. Thank you, Ted. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Ted has given you the main outlines of the show, but here are one or two other good reasons why I think you'll find it good listening. Number one, Fanny Bryce will not only appear as Baby Snook, but will also sing the narration of Walter Samuel's dramatic musical composition, Hollywood, the words of which were written by the famous columnist Ed Sullivan. That's number one. Fanny Bryce will sing. Two, Frank Morgan will not sing. Three, I will not sing. Now, if that isn't enough to keep your dialers happy for the next 60 minutes, then well, I don't... Pardon me, Bob. Yes, Meredith? I'm not going to sing either. Well, there you are, ladies and gentlemen. That's the greatest lineup of non-singing stars any program can boast. How can Bing Crosby follow that? I and uh, speaking of Crosby, Bob, yeah. we've got a lot of show tonight, so don't you, don't you think we'd better get going with the opening number? Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra open the program with Meredith's own arrangement of Wide Open Places. <laughs> off that number with a lot of zing. What's come over you? Why, haven't you heard, Bob? In three weeks, I'm leaving for uh, La Belle France. <laughs> That's what they call it over there. <laughs> you mean the insiders, uh -huh. huh? Ever been abroad before, Meredith? No, but gee, I'm lucky. Who do you think is taking care of my tickets and everything for me? Who? Frank Morgan. Oh, are you lucky. Oh, uh, listen, Bob, don't be sarcastic. You fellows don't understand Frank. He's a lovely guy, and he's always willing to help out a pal. And besides, he's got influence with the steamship line. Why, he's getting me my tickets for 50% off. Yeah, if you think Frank Morgan can handle that, you're 50% off. Well, that's what you think. Here he comes now, and I'll bet that he's got the tickets. Hello, Frankie! <laughs> Hello, Dizzy! Uh, hello, Bob. Hello, Frank. What did I tell you? Well, Frank, what about uh, La Belle France? <laughs> oh, yeah, isn't she a honey? I'm going down to see her tonight. No, uh, no, no. Uh, what about the ticket? Oh, yes. Well, I get in that burlesque theater for nothing. <laughs> Listen here, you silly man. Did you get my steamship ticket? Uh, it's, it's, it's what ticket? <laughs> what steamship? I guess you're right, Diddy. I just don't understand, Frank. Frank, please. Have you forgotten about my steamship ticket? My passport? You promised to take care of everything. 
Uh, oh, uh, yes. Oh, this is Caesar, of course. I've got the tickets right here in my pocket. And by the way, I didn't have a photograph for your passport. Well, why didn't you call me? Well, I took care of it all right. Don't worry. I just pasted in a swatch from a buffalo robe. Oh, that's, that's yeah. fine. Did, uh, did you get me that big reduction on the ticket? Uh, well, Morgan's word is as good as his bond. Yeah, a very low-grade bond. Uh, a very heavy-handed remark, my inept young cockatoo. Morgan Bond is a gilt edge, double barrel, blue chip. And furthermore, Frank, I... please, did what? you take care of everything? Why are you worried, Meredith? You gave me a check for $1,000. The normal price for the two tickets was $800. But I got them for 395 which is more than half off. Yeah, there must be a catch to this. What does he mean, Frank? Oh, disregard him, Meredith. The total and net cost of the tickets was $395. $395? Oh, boy, did we just... <laughs> ha, ha, Taylor. Uh, ha, ha, Taylor. Uh, yes. Well, of course, there's a slight additional charge for a messenger to go to the pier. Uh-huh. Uh, here it comes. Well, who cares? A messenger. How much was it, Frank? Oh, uh, $85. Did you say $85? Uh, yes, with a tip, of course. I, I had to... Frank, uh, that does seem a little high for a messenger. Well, the pier was in New York. The boy took a bus both ways. <laughs> well, that brings the bill up to $480, but it's still a steal. Why don't you give him his change, Frank? Uh, he says, yes, Hey, Frankie, uh, what, what sort of accommodations did you get for me? Oh, the very best. Now, look at this deck plan here. Now, this is the location your tickets call for, right here where mm-hmm. the, you see the cross mark. Uh, hey, yes. this cabin is right next to the engine room on deck G. Yeah, yeah that's under the water. <laughs> well, only partly. But I've already had you move to a delightful little hole. I mean, a cabin. Uh, right next to the ship's kennel. I've got uh, to live next to the kennel? Well, don't worry. I've already squared it with the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Would you believe it? That crooked purser wanted $200 to switch your cabin, but I beat him down to 150 150 bucks to get me a room next to the kennel? Well, just look, Meredith. It's only 50 yards from the bath. <laughs> oh, Meredith will like that. How far is it from the dining room? Well, about 20 minutes' walk as the crow flies. <laughs> uh, it will make a nice little stroll to sharpen up your appetite. And have I got things fixed for that dining room, Stuart? You I, have? Yes, for a measly $300, I've got the guy eating out of your hand. Now, see here, Mr. Frank. The total is now $930. Frank, I think the idea of tipping a dining room steward $300 is ridiculous. No, it isn't. Not when he managed to procure a couple of deck chairs for a paltry $75. <laughs> Meredith, you've got... your 1000 bucks is now gone and you old Frank five. Wait a minute. I feel a little dizzy. Well, that's just it. What you need is a boat trip. This will fix you up fine. I guess so. Yeah. Well, I'll be sailing July 2nd. Is that right? Uh, yes. Uh, could you let me have that five before you go? Yeah. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Now, here are the tickets. Yes, your cut rate tickets. Oh, well. Say, Frank, when do I get to Europe? Uh, Europe? Europe. Meredith, this boat doesn't go to Europe. It goes to Guatemala. Guatemala? Yes. Isn't this to Normandy? No, Meredith. This is a freight boat. How do you think I got the tickets so cheap? So cheap? I could have had the Royal Suite on the Queen Mary for half the money. Parvenu. I tell you, you'll love this trip, Meredith. You won't even smell the cargo till you get below Florida. Smell what cargo? What are they carrying? Live goats and salt mackerel. It's... Morgan, take these tickets and get out of here. I'm going to stop payment on my $1,000 check, and I want my $5 back. Well, of all the nerve, you stop that check, I'm stuck with a ticket. Yeah, why don't you go to Guatemala? Well, I'd sooner swim there than go on that horrible boat. That's the last time I do a favor for a friend. But I'll get rid of these tickets somehow. 